For more on the U.S. demands, we're joined by Remy Piet. Uh, he is a research associate at Florida International University. Remy, uh, the speech, Pompeo, pretty much a hard line on Iran. Uh, how do you view it? Yeah, it's a very strong and aggressive position from the United States. That is far from uh, the most negotiating and most uh, collaborative approach from uh, the European, uh, Russia, and China towards, uh, towards Iran. Uh, here you have a, a real uh, break from, uh, from what has been historically the position of the international community. It's demanding a capitulation on Iran, not only in terms of its nuclear program, but much more important in the eyes of the United States, uh, the position and support of different groups in the Middle East, whether it's Hezbollah, whether it's other groups in Syria, that actually are not uh, working in the direction of what would be in the American interest. So it's actually demanding uh, a reduction of this sphere of influence and also imposing changes to the ballistic missile, even if it's not nuclear-led. Uh, Remy, uh, one analyst uh, had this to say, and I want to get your reaction to it. He said, under this strategy articulated by Pompeo, the U.S. enacts a new round of crippling sanctions that will have Iran battling to keep its economy alive. And then Iran peacefully gives up and gives in to U.S. demands. It goes on to say sarcastically, it's all so easy. It's a wonder no previous president thought of it. Is this a foreign policy rooted in reality or fantasy? Well, it's a very realist, strong, uh, offensive policy from the United States. It's not so much the sanctions on Iran, it's also the pressure that is given from the United States on European countries, for example, and the companies that would want to uh, invest in Iran. Uh, the Iranian economy is as, as potential for a series of companies that have already been present in Iran and were looking at helping develop infrastructure, develop uh, sectors of the economy for the, for the world best interest of the population. We're not talking here about the establishment of Iran. And, and now all those companies from European companies more than anything are not able to operate in Iran because they would fear strong sanctions and strong penalties, such has been the case for the last few uh, years. Uh, I mean, several banks, French banks, for example, received uh, penalties up to $9 billion, BNP in that case, but also uh, uh, German or other European companies will not have to choose whether or not they want to help Iran develop or they want to close themselves to the American market. We heard from the Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, who said this, uh, the world today does not accept that the United States decides for the world. Countries have their independence. Who are you to decide for Iran and the world? But as you pointed out, uh, you do see companies already abandoning efforts in Iran, but what about the reaction from the Iranian president? Well, the reaction from the Iranian president is what is to be expected. They're facing uh, strong demands, unilateral demands from the United States, well, that break away from the coalition of interest from the European, Russians, and China, and, and, and the United States was a more concerning negotiation for Iran to drop their nuclear program. They actually had abided to this, and then they were making strong progress in trying to move and scale back from this nuclear program. But what's at stake here for the United States and their different allies in the Middle East, whether Saudi Arabia or Israel, is actually to make sure that Iran doesn't have any kind of influence in the Middle East, and that the shaping of the Middle East is led by uh, the United States and its allies. And therefore, they're demanding more than a nuclear weapon here. It's, they're demanding a total scale back of any kind of support to groups that would be sympathetic to Iran and would actually uh, push for, for an agenda that is not the one that Washington wants to see imposed in the Middle East. Will it be effective? Well, it will be effective potentially. What, what's, what the U.S. is trying to get is maybe a change of regime in Iran by forcing the population to seeing the strain on its own economy, seeing that the, 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 the promises from the Iranian administration that the economy is going to get better because they actually signed a deal with the Western partners and, and China and Russia, uh, allowing companies to invest in Iran and develop the economy. Now, this is not possible anymore because European or a uh, Russian co uh, uh, company will face the sanctions from the United States, whether they actually use the U.S. dollar or they, they uh, hire an American worker, they're actually sustain, uh, susceptible to be facing American uh, court system, uh, and therefore they will not take that risk. As a result, the Iranian economy will remain very underdeveloped de uh, and not in the best interest of the population that might trickle down the change of regime in Iran. That's actually the, uh, the policy that the U.S. is trying to get uh, uh, implemented today. Remy, we're going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us from Miami. Appreciate it.